speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When credit cards first came on the scene, which I seem to remember was sometime in the 1960s, or I may be wrong, um, the slogan for one of them was, take the waiting out of wanting. We have seen a few generations of what we might call the instant society, the must-have generation. We'll buy now and pay later. And of course, there are times in life when that is a very sensible and good thing to do, but it can also lead people into all sorts of problems. Patience, waiting, planning for the future are difficult things to abide by. Patience is a hard virtue. We had Ascension Day on Thursday and were reminded in the Gospel Jesus saying to his disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait. The angels say in the Acts of the Apostles version, why are you people standing here looking up to heaven? They go back to Jerusalem, where Jesus had told them they would be clothed with power from on high. They prayed they waited, and next Sunday we shall celebrate the great joy of the effects of Pentecost. But these days between Ascension and Pentecost are just about that, about waiting, waiting on the Lord. And our two archbishops have commended this time to Christians all over the world as a time for prayer and reflection given the title, Thy Kingdom Come. Words we say every day, but perhaps without much thought about their implications. If we pray that, what are we really asking for? What are we aligning ourselves with in God's mission to his world? As one theologian has put it, the church is to be a sign, a foretaste, and an instrument of that kingdom. Yes, we are to show people what the kingdom of God will look like. We are to be a foretaste of that, to let people feel the effects of that kingdom. And we are to be an instrument of that kingdom in bringing it about. And the marks of that kingdom are reflected in our readings today, in the gospel, Jesus prays for the unity of his followers. Jesus looks beyond the immediate circle of disciples to those who will believe as a result of their testimony. And there are two dimensions to expressions of unity as they emerge in John's gospel. The vertical dimension in the relationship between Jesus and the Father. And the horizontal dimension is seen in the command to love one another, which is the expression of that relationship among members of the community. You see, unity isn't about a cozy organizational thing which makes everyone nice to each other. No, it's about the reflection of the relationship Jesus has with the Father, which is the paradigm for all Christian people. In the reading from the Acts, we see the relationship with the Father being revealed in a dramatic encounter. Paul and Silas, on their mission, encounter a slave girl who is a clairvoyant. And she recognizes the Holy Spirit working in them, and they exorcise her. Her owners lose their business, which not unnaturally makes them very angry. Paul and Silas are arrested and put into the innermost part 
the most secure part of the prison. And there they are, praying and praising, not knowing what tomorrow will bring, but still exercising that relationship with the Father. And then, of course, the dramatic natural disaster nearly demolishes the prison. The jailer fears execution, and quite rightly too. If he had lost the prisoners, there would be no compunction in killing him. And he is about to do that himself. But through Paul's acknowledgement, his life is changed. He and his family are baptised, and they enter a new kind of life. So the kingdom is about unity with God and other disciples in a relationship of love which spills out into the most challenging and brutal aspects of life to bring transformation and new life. Yes, we may want to take the waiting out of wanting, but it is the quiet waiting on God for his Holy Spirit to guide us and empower us which will enable us to be signs, foretastes, and instruments of his kingdom. So let's pray, thy kingdom come, even more fervently and expectantly. Amen.